Hi, hi everyone. Um, I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, so I apologize for that, but I It's about grief, it's about loss, it's about growing up confused and sad and frustrated. Um, we're gonna get a little vulnerable here on the channel today. In this video, I'm doing the harder parts about being adopted advice to parents that I'd give them, especially for raising a multicultural child from like, you know, I'm getting raised in a white family, I'm, I'm Chinese, what does that look like? How do you give that kind of individual the most flourishing life possible, give them the circumstances that you're in, in order for them to, full, to form a full identity, um, in my opinion. And then advice to adoptees. How can you live like this? How can you feel comfortable? How can you get to learn to love yourself? Hopefully love the family you're in and also love the family you came from, right? So it's all of that right now, which is a hard video. I'm gonna talk about personal like experiences and things that I've gone through that are honestly really sad um, and things that I think not everybody sees when we talk about uh, being adopted and what that really means and how much of a toll it is on somebody emotionally to be adopted um, in any circumstance. And I'll be talking obviously from my viewpoint and my own experience and not really anybody else's because um, who am I to speak on that. Acknowledging the loss that it is to go through when you are adopted. So on like a physical tangible level, there are like some known facts, I guess you could say. Um, Cause a lot of like what adoption is for me is like facts or, or unknown data, if that makes sense. So like I was birthed from my mother. So I knew I was with her at a moment in time. I don't know how long that moment was. I don't know if she touched me, if she held me. I, don't know if I was ever with my birth father, but I do know I ended up in an orphanage, right? So there's this kind of like, there's a lot of blank spots and a lot of missing spots to understanding what, how did I come about? How long did I stay with my mother? How long did I stay with my father? How long did I stay with like the orphanage? Where was I dropped off when I was, you know, kind of put up for adoption, all that kind of stuff is not really ever going to be known and there's a lot of unknowns but there's a lot of like it has to be true in order for me to have existed and that's the only grounds and basis that we have sometimes to feel like connected I guess I apologize if I well I don't apologize but I might cry in this video um because it's a really hard topic and it gets me kind of sad like so like I just thought of this I've never thought of this before but like Certain facts that you know are like, I was conceived. I was in my mother for possibly, you know, nine to 10 months. I've never really thought about that. I, this is like just now, I've never really thought about that, that I've had nine months with her. I didn't, you know, I, it's really sad to think about that. Um, Because to me, I feel like I've had no time with her. But those nine months were a lot for me, I guess, you know? And so I wanted to talk about these moments where you kind of have to reflect and think about what you do know and what is tangible and real but also like accepting what you don't and I feel like I've done a fairly good job at that but there are moments like this where I come to realizations and I can't fully comprehend what that means and its significance to me yet I wanted to talk about like this experience of kind of losing parents and that feeling of loss and sadness
And then on a greater note, losing, for me at least, losing a culture, losing a community, losing a town, losing a home, losing a life. That I feel like, I think about that of like, if I had stayed in China and I was raised, what would my life be like? I think about these things, right? So I wanted to be honest and vulnerable here because I think a lot of people feel very displaced when they're adopted and they don't feel like they have a home or a space um, to live in and exist in. And I felt that way for probably like, I knew my, my home, right? And I, I loved my home, I loved my toys, I loved my, you know, kind of my bed, I loved my room. But I always felt like I was plopped into that setting and I want to do work to kind of feel like I'm a part of the space that I'm in instead of me just being plopped there. I wanted to talk about one of the early things, like some snapshots, I guess you would call them, um, in my life that I think give a really great depiction of some of the hardest moments um, in my life. So this is a hard topic, right? So there is like sadder things I'll be talking about today, but I wanted to also say Acknowledging loss and grief and going through grief and working through that, I feel like it's a lifetime experience and something that you do progressively through life. I don't think there's ever some checkpoint where you're like, yep, yeah, I've done it. Um, and there's never a point where you don't feel that loss. There's not a time where you don't grieve and feel sad about it. Um, I wanted to share small snapshots of moments that I vividly remember because I don't remember a lot from my childhood quite honestly um but one of the things one of the categories of things that I remember is really vivid sad moments um of my childhood where I was crying alone or feeling confused alone and I, you know I talked to my mom or therapist about it but I felt it alone is really the core of it um, because that's one of the core m things that makes it so difficult to be adopted is because you kind of go through the experience alone. Many people have siblings who are also adopted, they can talk to them about it. As an only child, that was fairly difficult. Um, and as the only child who went to predominantly white schools with very few adopted girls, I didn't get to talk to a lot of people about this. Um, that's why I'm making these videos. Um, I feel like these videos can serve as me being your friend and talking to you about what it's like to be adopted and how that feels. So I wanted to acknowledge or talk about two small snapshots that like kind of depict what really went on in my life that I remember. Um, I don't even know if my mom knows these. I didn't get to talk to a lot of people about this. Um, that's why I'm making these videos. Um, I feel like these videos can serve as me being your friend and talking to you about what it's like to be adopted and how that feels. I used to go to a Chinese school to learn Mandarin when my when I first came here and a lot of the class was filled with other little girls who were adopted trying to relearn Chinese. Um, what was hardest for me in that center, in that place, was seeing adult Asian women and adult Asian men like be there. Because it made me miss my mom the most. It made me, my birth mom. It made me miss my birth dad the most. Was seeing those figures. So I remember going to those events, having a great time, blah, blah, blah. Coming home and bawling my eyes out. So upset, so distraught. Honestly, missing my family. Missing my birth mom, my birth dad. Um, it was really hard to see other Asian older figures because I had never really seen them before. Quite honestly, I see them on the street passing by, but I never had them as a mentor or as a teacher. I never had them as... It was kind of heartbreaking experience to see those figures and them not to be mine. I really wanted that. So we used to go to things like Peking Acrobats, and I would see all the men perform and the women perform. And I used to ask my mom earnestly. Another small um, snapshot that I feel like is worth sharing is I remember... A similar moment where like I was crying on the couch, I was really sad after I'd come home from one of these cultural events and I went to my mirror in the bathroom and I looked at myself and I just whispered out loud, I miss you. And that was a moment where I had 
been in the intention of speaking to my birth mother. Where I didn't know where she was. I didn't know if she could hear me. But speaking to her out loud. And I had never tried this before. I remember I was like maybe a teenager early like 10, 11, 12. And I just looked in the mirror trying to look at her in me. And I said I miss you and I love you. That was a really vulnerable moment for me. Um, I was very scared to do that. And I had never spoken to her before. And I hope she heard me. I don't know. But this is part of it, right? This is... This is like, talking about these snapshots I feel like was really important for me. Because other people have moments like this. Where they're alone, they're feeling it alone. And they do sweet things like this. I talk to their mother in the mirror. Anyway, that's that's essentially like my first part of this video is just like it was that and it was also I didn't let myself join my adoptive family in my heart until I was much older. I feel like a lot of I don't know what a lot of other kids experience, but I used to call it like my mom's family. Now I call it my family. But even when I was older and I was able to acknowledge that I, that I see them, you know, many times during the holidays, I do whatever, like all the routine things. Um, I didn't let myself feel like part of that family until I was like teenager, 15, 16, older than that. Probably like 18, 19 to be quite honest. Um, when my grandmother was passing away, did I ever like really like buckle down and say, okay, no, this is my family. This is mine. Um, and I'm a part of it. I'm in it. And I fully belong in it. I did not come to that realization or that acceptance level with myself um, until much later on. Uh, so I wanted to talk about that too because I feel like other people have those issues of not letting themselves join the family in their hearts. I still have hard times with it. Um, I still feel removed at times when I'm standing, like another snapshot, when I'm standing with my family at a restaurant and they ask if I'm with them. It's just like, I stick out like a sore thumb. It, I forget sometimes and then I have moments like that where the public reminds me that I don't look like them. And it's really hard because um, it feels like I don't belong with them when they ask that. They're just asking a genuine question, how many people are we seating? But on a, on a me note, it, it hurts a lot. The first point I have here is taking kids to cultural events of their ethnicity slash race. Even though I just spoke about how those moments were hard for me, I am so glad and grateful that my mom put me in those. I would recommend that you don't do it until the child feels like they want to do it, so a little bit older than I went, and maybe like doing that with therapy, doing that with something where they get to be mindful and maybe with a mentor or whoever to be mindful and think about what that experience is like and how it feels. But I'm sad I didn't have anyone to talk to about it on a real level. I had a therapist at the time, but we didn't talk about stuff like that. I needed an adoptive therapist to speak about those hard hard feelings. And I didn't have, my advice to parents is if they, if you, you should put them in, in things that are culturally significant to them, to your kid, but you should also co-pair co it with Something in the lines of mindfulness talking about that experience to a degree. It doesn't have to be like really intense, but let like talk to their your kid. If it's not therapy, talk to your kid about how they're feeling. Ask them. Get them somebody who's also adopted. Maybe they're also from that center. And have them have a discussion about it. Think about it. That's another thing. Let kids be in spaces with other kids that look like them. It just gives you a sense of comfort. It gives you a sense of belonging that I don't think you ever get when you are just in a PWI, predominantly white institution or, you know, school. To feel like you really belong and feel like that you aren't this like sore thumb, black sheep um, kind of scenario. That's another thing for parents. I would also say let your kid go on their journey of letting themselves accept themselves into your family. Because I think parents are really, the parent, like the parents I've seen who are adopted, adopting kids and stuff are really wonderful of wrapping a warm blanket of comfort and love around their child. But it also 
takes a little bit for a kid to feel comfortable to warm up to you and to warm up to that family and I would give that time. It took me 18 years. It may take them five, it may take them 40, who knows. Um, but I feel like letting them go at their own pace and not like getting mad at them and frustrated when the kid is like having a hard time saying I love you, wanting hugs, wanting kisses, whatever. For a while, um, when I was being raised by my mom, I didn't want hugs, I didn't want kisses. Um, and my mom respected that boundary and she didn't kiss me, she didn't hug me because I told her I didn't like it and I wasn't ready for it. Respecting kids' physical boundaries when they're adopted I think is a big deal and I hope that parents do that moving forward as well. And then the, my advice to adoptees, right? I feel like it's hard to really think about and feel out and understand how you're feeling. Um, and I would just grant yourself patience with that. Um, I obviously have, you know, a lot of sadness and things that I'd like to work with and think about and feel and talk about. And I think everybody does, right? And so I would be kind to yourself in this process. And I would tell yourself that you're going to have snapshots like I did. Or you've had snapshots like I have. And talking about them and acknowledging them at least for me, has done a lot. It's made me vocalize the harder times and that's helped me heal from them. That's helped me move through them and like move with them and carry them in my life as I do. Want kids to learn to love themselves and I hope kids get to learn and love their family and their, and their birth family, right? I think that not forgetting about that is really important like acknowledging that you have a birth family and that you have you know a life a city a town a home that you once had that you do not anymore and you have in your heart you have in your history but you don't have currently is really important <clears throat> to close out this video I thought I'd also share some really um joyous moments perhaps because I feel like adoption is really hard it's really sad sometimes but there are some wonderful great moments one of the most wonderful things is my adoption day it's the day that my mom and I get to celebrate um that we get to be together what a gift that is how wonderful she is to me how much I love being with her it's just been a really wonderful thing to have in my life and I you know I'm very thankful for that um, the opportunity and chance that I get to be with them was like a one in trillion shot, right? And it happened. And I wouldn't want it any other way. So I think that's what I'll end my video on. Working through and talking about the hardships like I just did, talking about what to do moving forward, and talking about what you're grateful for are those steps that I take to healing and to feeling better. Thank you for watching this video. Please tell me what you thought in the comments. Um, I will comment back and uh, we'll go from there. I will see you guys later, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.